Hi, this is a series on how do we find the gospel in every single book of the Bible. And um, today we're going to be talking about 1st and 2nd Samuel. Uh, start right off by pointing out that 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles are actually not six books. They're three books. They're each one is written by the same author. Uh, the reason they got divided, uh, we're not totally sure why, but probably they were divided in order to fit them on scrolls. Uh, we don't know quite when that happened, but the point is you need to be looking at each of those first and second books as really one book. And first and second Samuel is a book about two things in particular. It's about kingship and it's about repentance. If you're going to break down first and second Samuel, it's fairly easy. The first seven chapters are about Samuel, who was the last of the judges of Israel. He was a prophet and a judge. And then from chapter 7 all the way to the end of 1 Samuel, it's a story of the kingship of Saul, who was the first of all the uh, Israelite kings. 2 Samuel, beginning with chapter 1 all the way to the end, chapter 24, uh, is where David we now have as the second king. So you've got pretty simple. It's the last judge, first king, and the second king. And the kingship was actually mentioned in Deuteronomy. When Moses was talking about the future of Israel, he talked about, or God, through Moses, talked about the fact that at some point Israel would have a king, and this is what the king should do. So the idea that a king would come uh, wasn't a crazy idea at all. In fact, uh, the original gospel presentation, which is actually in Genesis 3.15, as we said before, where God predicts that a descendant of Eve, uh, the seed of the woman, a descendant of Eve, would destroy the works of the devil, would destroy the works of evil, uh, would crush the devil's head. That meant that there was a deliverer coming. And so the idea of a king coming, maybe that's the deliverer that God has talked about. And what a true king would do would be to deliver us from all our perils and also uh, make us the people we ought to be. But the story of First and Second Samuel is that the first king doesn't do that at all, Saul, because he doesn't repent. He does many things wrong, but he doesn't repent. And the second king, David, does a much better job because he also does things wrong, but unlike Saul, he repents. So the two themes are the kingship and the importance of repentance. That leads us to one thing we always do here is to ask, what does Second Samuel, First and Second Samuel, uh, do to for the biblical storyline? How does it contribute to the biblical storyline? And the answer I've already hinted at. The answer is this: by the end of First and Second Samuel, you're beginning to realize, you know what, a human king is not going to do it either. Uh, we need a king who can make us all that we are. We need a king who can deliver us from all oppressive forces. But even David, who was the best of the kings, was quite imperfect. He was guilty of adultery and guilty of murder and guilty of many things. And so by the end, you're realizing we're going to need a king, but not just a human king. And in that sense, we, you, you see the biblical storyline being moved along. David, for example, really looks like this is the guy. This, this is the deliverer. This is the one that Genesis 3.15 talked about. But even inside 2 Samuel chapter 7, God appears to David and says, you're not the one. There's going to be one of your descendants who is going to reign forever and ever. So a king is coming who's going to deliver everyone, but it's not you. And that's how we're moving this biblical storyline along. Uh, one more thing. <clears throat> How does 1st and 2nd Samuel help us understand the gospel? And again, these things all uh, move into one another. Um, the gospel is, number one, that we're saved by grace, not by works. Uh, no human effort can save us. Only Jesus' effort can save us. And of course, 1st and 2nd Kings is setting us up to see that. That no human effort, no human king, no human deliverer, no, nothing that human beings do can really rid us of our sin and evil and can make us what we should be. The other thing we're beginning to see is the power of repentance, because you see it in, in, in Saul. He's guilty of envy, self-deception, all kinds of problems, but he can't solve them because he doesn't repent. 
David has many, many problems, but he solves them because he repents. And as we know, repentance is crucial to understanding the gospel because it's not good works that save you. It's your willingness to repent. Or as the Westminster Confession of Faith says, as there is no sin so small, but it deserves damnation. So there is no sin so great that it can bring damnation on those who truly repent. Lastly, how does this actually point us to Christ? How does first and second Samuel point us to Christ? There are key um, images that point us to Jesus. The one is David and Goliath. The most famous chapter in the book is where little David stands forth as a champion against Arissa's life against Goliath. And a champion was someone, if two, if two armies put a champion forward and the champion who beat the other champion, uh, that meant that the, the one army wins, even though it was only one person that risked his life. And the other army loses, even though it was only one person that lost his life. And therefore, when David kills Goliath, his victory is imputed. It's transferred to, to the Israelite army. They win without lifting a finger. And the same way, of course, Jesus Christ is our substitute. He's our champion. He, of course, put himself forward and fought for us, not at just the risk of his life, but at the cost of his life. And his victory is transferred to us. Secondly, of course, you, as many of you know, um, the, um, the son of David that is predicted in 2 Samuel 7 is Jesus. Jesus is, uh, God, uh, God tells David, there's going to be one of your descendants who's going to reign forever. And so there, ever after that, the Messiah, the uh, predicted Messiah was known as going to be the son of David. One last idea. Uh, Jesus is a true king. But as we're going to see, he's also a suffering servant. And at this point, that's not yet to be seen. Uh, it won't come out until we get into the prophets. But right now, we do know that he is the king that, you're, that you need, that I need, and that all of our hearts need.